Most inverters nowadays work in with several batteries connected together in series, but only two wires go into the inverter, the negative terminal of the first battery and the positive terminal of the last battery, and the voltage across other terminals remains untouched. So I start to thinking about what's gonna happen if I design a new inverter that uses the other voltages across the other terminals too. So let's say we have four batteries, six volt each, and they are connected together in series. The inverter takes this 24 volt DC and convert it to 240 volt AC. We can imagine the inverter as an amplifier with amplification factor of 10. Now imagine we have a selector switch here. When you start the inverter, the selector switch connects the inverter to the 6 volt. 6 volt multiply by 10 so the output voltage will be 60 volt. After 1 millisecond, the selector switch connect the inverter to 12 volt. Multiply by 10 so the output voltage will be 120 volt. Then the 18 volt multiply by 10 and will be 180 volt. And finally the 24 volt goes to the inverter and output is 240 volt. Now we have to do the same steps in reverse. Now change the polarity of the input to create the negative cycle of the output waveform. So we end up with something called the stair step waveform. We can convert it to pure sine wave just by using a low pass filter. By the way, the peak voltage here in pure sine wave must be 340 volt to give you 240 volt RMS. So the amplification here must be 14, not 10. So this is my circuit. I'm using these four MOSFETs as a selector switch. These 4017 IC switch them on and off sequentially. The other two MOSFETs, one to create the positive cycle and the other to create the negative cycle of the waveform. At the beginning, the first MOSFET is switched on, so the voltage across the primary of the transformer will be 6 volt. Then the second MOSFET is switched on, so the voltage will be 12 volt. The third MOSFET, 18 volt, and the last one, 24 volt. Then the same thing but in reverse sequence. Now for the negative cycle of the waveform, this second MOSFET is switched on. The same step repeated again for the negative cycle. This oscillator creates a clock pulse with a frequency of 480 Hz for the first group of the MOSFETs and almost 50 Hz for the second group of the MOSFETs. I used these diodes because imagine the second MOSFET is switched on that can create a short circuit across the second battery through the body diode of the first MOSFET. So this is why I forced to use these diodes. I designed the PCB and ordered it from PCBWay. I hooked up the 6V batteries to the inverter. At the beginning, I used it without a transformer to make sure everything is just fine. The blue waveform is the negative cycle and the yellow one is the positive cycle. You see how the MOSFET is switched on each battery one by another. After testing the circuit, I was about to connect the transformer, but it turns out I haven't a transformer with a proper voltage, so I decided to use a 3.7 volt lithium battery instead of 6 volt. This is the output waveform without using the low pass filter, and this is the output waveform after using the LC filter. It's not a perfect sine wave, but you can try different value for inductor and capacitor to get a better result. This is the output voltage with a frequency of 50 Hz. I'm using a 5 watt incandescent light bulb as a load. A snubber circuit here can protect the MOSFETs from high voltage spikes. To be honest with you, there is a major problem in this design of the inverter. In regular inverter, the same exact current passing through all the batteries, because they are connected together in series. But in my inverter, as you can see, each battery discharged with different current than the other and that can create imbalanced voltages across the batteries. Discharge one of them while the other stay charged. So using a battery equalizer or BMS is so important here. One of the solution could be using solar panels instead of batteries. The other problem is using diodes here. These diodes create 0.7 volt voltage drop. And even though they are so big, but they can handle only 10 amps of current, 24 volt times 10 amps is equal to 240 watts. This is the maximum input power from the batteries. The output power will be even less because the efficiency is not 100%. This is why I call it experimental inverter. Please like this video and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.